Microsoft Azure Administrator exam or AZ-104 certification is a highly sought after credentials for IT professionals. It validates an individual knowledge of managing cloud services and the resources in Azure cloud environment. And yes, there is a super important question today that will help you understand both virtual machines and virtual networks. So let's begin today's episode with question number 51 and this question is similar to the questions from 48 to 50 of part 7. So for the complete understanding and three more variations of this question but in a different question format and the documentation to validate the answer, please check out the part 7. Links are right there in the description box. Now let's read this question. Question says that you have two Hyper-V hosts named Host1 and Host2. Now the Host1 has an Azure virtual machine named VM1 that was deployed by using custom Azure Resource Manager template or ARM template. Now you need to move virtual machine 1 to Host2. What should you do? And your options are option A from the update management blade click enable. Option B from the overview blade move the virtual machine 1 to a different subscription. Option C from the redeploy blade click redeploy and option D from the profile blade modify the usage location. And the correct answer for this question is option C from the redeploy blade click the redeploy option. And yes, as I just said, you can watch the part 7 for complete understanding and documentation. Now let's move on to a super important question. Question number 52. The question says that you have an Azure subscription named subscription 1 containing the following resources. Here you can see that we are given with this table and we can see that we have two kind of resources. The first one is RG1 which is a resource group and this resource group resides in a virtual network named VNet1. Similarly, you can see we have another resource group which is RG2 that resides in virtual network 1. Moving on, the question says that VNet1 is in RG1 and VNet2 is in RG2 and there is no connectivity between VNet1 and VNet2. And then the question says that administrator named admin1 creates a Azure virtual machine named VNet1 in RG1. Now VNet1 uses disk named disk1 and connects to the VNet1 and admin1 then installs a custom application in VNet1. Now you need to move this custom application to VNet2 and the solution must minimize the administrative effort. Which two actions should you perform? To answer, select the appropriate answer among the options provided. And yes, please note very carefully we have two steps. This is the first step and this is the second step. Now let's read what are the options given for the first step. As a first option, we are given with create a network interface in RG2. Then the second option is detach a network interface. The third option is delete VM1 or virtual machine 1. And the last option is move the network interface card to RG2. So out of these four options, you have to select the most appropriate or most correct option. Moving on to the step two or second step, we have options. First one is attach a network interface. Second option is create a network interface card in RG2. And then the third option is move VM1 to RG2. And lastly, create a new virtual machine. So I understand that this question looks very intimidating at the first class. But do not worry, let me dissect the question for you. See, the main task in the question is that the admin who has installed a custom application in virtual machine 1, which is on VNet1 and VNet1, where is VNet1? VNet1 is in RG1. Now, as per the question, the admin needs to move this custom application to VNet2, which is in resource group 2. Now, friends, in these kind of questions, think a little and try and understand between the lines. It's a custom application, so the admin must have installed the custom application in some kind of disk, which in turn is connected to a virtual machine named VNet1. Now, the best way to achieve this business case is to simply plug out this disk from one virtual machine and plug that disk into another virtual machine. But there is a catch and that catch is that both the virtual machines are on different networks. So virtual machine 1 is in the virtual network named VNet1 and virtual machine 2 is in the virtual network named VNet2. And both these VNets reside in different resource group. And here comes the super important point that you cannot move the virtual machines between different networks. See, first we identify the disk used by the virtual machine 1 and remember our custom application is on this disk. 
And now we can delete the virtual machine itself. Very critical point to note here is that when you delete a virtual machine, the attached disk is not deleted unless you remove the entire resource group containing both the virtual machine and the disk. So now let's suppose that we have deleted the virtual machine, but the disk is still there. We can now create another virtual machine in the target virtual network, which in our case is VNet2. And then we can attach the original disk containing the custom application with this virtual machine in the virtual network too. And this way, my friends, we have effectively moved the virtual machine from one VNet to another and also thereby moving the custom application. So I hope you understood the logic. Now let me reveal the answers. For the step one, the correct option would be delete virtual machine. And for the second step, the correct option is create a new virtual machine. Now let me give you some documentation so that you can also validate the answer. So now you can see I'm in the Microsoft q and section. Let's read the question. The question is that how to change the VNet of a virtual machine. Let's go to the details. Here you can read it says that we have created multiple VNets in Azure. Now they communicate with each other using virtual network gateway and we want to change the VNet of the virtual machine to another one. How do we do that without deallocating or deleting or recreating the virtual machine? So let's check out the answer. The answer given is that the easiest way to do this is to delete the virtual machine but keep the OS disk. And the second step is deploy a new virtual machine in new subnet and use the still existing OS disk. Also friends, this is the second documentation that I want to share with you. You can read all the details and the question asked, but then I have just shared all the details with you, but you can check in your own time. But as I have just shared all the details, I will not read the entire documentation. Links are right there in the description box. You can read when your time permits. So I hope you understood the entire logic and how we picked the answer. In case you have still some doubts, let me know in the comment section. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 53. Let's read the instructions first. It says that this question is a part of a series of questions that presents the same scenario. Now each question in the series contains a unique solution that might meet the stated goals. Now some of the question set might have more than one correct solution while the others might not have a correct solution. And after you answer a question in this section, you will not be able to return to it. And as a result, these questions will not appear in the review screen. Simply put, in the real exam, you will not be able to mark these questions as review later. So it's super important that you answer this question with all your attention. Now let's read the question. Question says that you have an Azure virtual machine named VM1 that runs on Windows Server 2016. Now you need to create an alert in Azure when more than two error events are logged to the system event log on virtual machine one within one hour. And the solution given is that you create an Azure Log Analytics workspace and configure data settings and you add the Microsoft Monitoring Agent VM extension to Virtual Machine 1. And then you create an alert in Azure Monitor and specify Log Analytics workspace as the source. Does this beat the goal? Yes or no? And friends, this solution is not correct. That's why no is the correct answer. Now let me give you more variations of the same question as it appears in the real exam. So here we have question number 54. Question exactly is the same. Let's read the solution. This time the solution says that you create an Azure Log Analytics workspace and configure the data setting and you install Microsoft Monitoring Agent on VM1. And also you create an alert in Azure Monitor and specify Log Analytics workspace as the source. Does this meet the goal? Yes and no. And yes, my friends, this is the correct solution. That's why yes is the correct answer. And yes, there is a very slight difference between both the questions, question number 53 and this question 54. Let me see how many of you can figure this out, but let me give you a hint. So here it is. So in the question number 53, we talked about add the Microsoft Monitoring Agent VM extension to VM1 or Virtual Machine 1 and that is wrong. So what is the correct solution? Well, you have to install the Microsoft Monitoring Agent to VM1 and this one is correct. And in case you want to understand how to create an edit and alert rule, this is the documentation. And also my friends, Azure Monitor Agent is something that you want to understand. And friends, although I have already shared the correct answer with you, but there are two more variations of the same question. Let's also check them out. So here it comes. Question number 55. Question once again exactly is the same. Let's directly read the solution. Here it comes. It says that you can create an Azure storage account and configure shared access signatures, also known as SaaS. And then you install the Microsoft Monitoring Agent on Virtual Machine 1. You create an alert in Azure Monitor and specify the storage account as the source. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And of course, this is not the correct solution. That's why no is the correct answer. Now let's check out. 
Now let's check out the last variation of the same question. Question number 56. Solution says that you create an event subscription on virtual machine 1 and then you create an alert in Azure monitor and specify the virtual machine 1 as source. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And of course, this is also not the correct solution. That's why no is the correct answer. Question number 57. Question says that your company has an Azure subscription. Now you need to deploy a number of Azure virtual machine using Azure resource manager or ARM templates. Now you have been informed that the virtual machines will be included in a single availability set and you are required to make sure that the ARM templates you configure allows for as many virtual machines as possible to remain accessible in the event of fabric failure or maintenance. Which of the following is the value that you should configure for the platform for domain count property? And your options are 10, option B 30, option C minimum value or option D maximum value. And the correct answer is option D max value. And here is the explanation. So the platform fault domain count is a property that defines how many fault domains there are in a availability set. And as you can see, the upper limit is two to three depending upon the region. And here's the example. If the platform fault domain count is set to three and you have 15 virtual machines in the availability set, it means that five virtual machine can fail and become unavailable at a time, but remaining 12 virtual machines will still be available. Now let's take a related question. Question number 58. Question says that your company has an Azure subscription. Now you need to deploy a number of Azure virtual machines using Azure ARM templates. And once again, you have been informed that the virtual machines will be included in a single availability set and you are required to make sure that the ARM templates that you configure allows for as many virtual machines as possible to remain accessible in the event of fabric failure or maintenance. Which of the following is the value should you configure for the platform update domain count property? Your options are option A 10, option B 20, option C 30 or option D max value. And the correct answer for this question is option B 20. And here's the explanation. It says that the platform update domain count is a property that defines how many update domains are there in the availability set and the upper limit is 20 and that's our answer as well. Moving on with the question number 59 question says that you have an Azure subscription named subscription one that contains Azure log analytics workspace named workspace one. Now you need to view the error events from a table named event. Which query should you run in the workspace one? And here my friends, you can see that we are given with four queries. Let's read the first one. Here it says get event event pipe where the event type is error. The second option is event pipe search error. And the third option is select star from event where the event type is error. And lastly, search in event pipe where event type equals to error. And the correct answer for this question is option B event pipe search error. And now on your screen is question number 60. And the question says that you create an Azure storage account. Now you plan to add 10 blob containers to the storage account. For one of the containers, you need to use a different key to encrypt data at rest. What should you do before you create the container? Your options are generate a shared access signature. Option B, modify the minimum TLS version. And option C is rotate the access key and option D create an encryption scope. And the correct answer is option D create an encryption scope. And just so you know, encryption scopes enable you to manage encryption with a key that is scoped to a container or individual blob. And you can use the encryption scopes to create secure boundaries between the data that resides in the same storage account but belongs to different customers. And of course, we can validate our answer on this documentation. Here you can read in the highlighted text that a default encryption scope must be specified for a container at the time the container is created. And that's exactly what our question is also asking. That's why create an encryption scope is the correct answer. So my friends, are you missing something? You missed to press the subscribe button and a small cute little button, the bell icon there so that you get the timely notifications of all our upcoming videos as I bring multiple videos and shots every week. So do tune in and also consider watching the previous episodes of this AZ104 series. Please give this video a thumbs up because this is the only way for us to expand and reach wider audience. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.